U.S. President Joe Biden and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg met today in Washington. The two leaders are preparing for a pivotal NATO leader summit in Lithuania. We agree to sustain and step up our support to Ukraine, further strengthen our uh, deterrence and defense, including by a new commitment uh, to invest more in defense. And I expect allies to agree that 2% of GDP for defense uh, uh, has to be a minimum of what allies have to invest uh, in our shared security. Meanwhile, Lithuania's Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs, Egedius Melunis, is in Ottawa. He testified before the House Foreign Affairs Committee this afternoon. Ukraine's long-term security is a key focus for his country. Vice Minister, thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you for the invitation. You, you told the Foreign Affairs Committee this afternoon that when you host NATO in Vilnius, uh, you, ha you want the alliance to find a way to anchor Ukraine to the Euro-Atlantic security order. What does that look like in your view? No, first of all, uh, I, I, I would like to say that uh, Ukraine's rightful place is in NATO, it's no doubt. Uh, Ukraine, first of all, proved to be capable, effectively fight with uh, most significant a direct threat to Euro-Atlantic uh, uh, community, NATO, namely Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, in this regard, uh, it's clear that they are fighting not only for their independence and freedom, but also for ours. So they are rightful places in NATO. In uh, uh, Bucharest uh, NATO leaders meeting in uh, 2008, uh, NATO leaders agreed that uh, uh, Ukraine and Georgia will join NATO. So now at Vilnius NATO Summit we have to set up a very clear path for Ukraine's future NATO membership, setting up necessary remaining steps. Right. And those are steps clearly that can't be taken until the war is over because of Article 5 in NATO, that if they were to join now uh, in the middle of the conflict. I wonder if that creates a sort of perverse incentive for Russia to never end the conflict, to keep it going if, it's, if it prevents NATO from entering or prevents mm -hmm. Ukraine from entering NATO. Yes, actually what we see analyzing Russia's behavior right now, that they are determined to continue the uh, aggressive, uh, brutal uh, behavior against uh, Ukraine, other neighboring countries, but also NATO. So that's why we say that uh, 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 in the context of Russia's uh, aggression against Ukraine, first of all, we have to set a very, very clear uh, uh, path for uh, and uh, uh, set up a uh, next steps for Ukraine's future NATO membership. Right, so uh, until then, uh, one of the things that's been discussed is Ukraine is asking for security guarantees. Yeah. And you look at some of the public reporting, there's disagreement on what that would look like. Mm. Does the entire alliance do it? Just mm. some of the powers of Western Europe? Or is it mm. an arrangement like America has with Israel, for mm. example? Well, how do you see, where does Lithuania stand on that request? Our position is uh, very clear. Uh, real, true security guarantees is uh, uh, Ukraine's membership, uh, uh, full-pledged membership in NATO and Article 5. Uh, other arrangements, I am not so sure we can uh, uh, call it security guarantees. Enhanced uh, uh, support, yes, but uh, we have to be very clear. Full 100% security guarantees is only in case of uh, Ukraine's membership in NATO. So how quickly could that happen after the war? Because I know there were still some things that, that some reforms and, and, and changes that people wanted Ukraine to make before they could be mm. fully accepted into NATO uh, membership. But you're adamant mm. on this. How quickly do you want them in the minute this conflict ends? I would say in this uh, way as soon as possible. So that's why we have to discuss among allies and uh, with Ukraine on uh, possibilities to, um, first of all, to set up this uh, uh, very clear pathway, remaining steps, and then on possibilities to implement, uh, to make these steps as soon as possible. At the NATO summit in Spain last year, there was an agreement to surge the battle groups in the Baltic yeah. nations to brigade level, but it hasn't quite happened. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on, on the pace of that mm -hmm. surge? Are you disappointed or are you understanding mm -hmm. of, of why it's taking so long? Uh, 
Uh, no, first of all, it's a uh, uh, process. Uh, we are happy that our leaders uh, last year in Madrid uh, uh, agreed, first of all, on one uh, 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 key uh, issue, that uh, Russia is the most significant and direct threat to the whole NATO alliance. In this regard, uh, all leaders recognized this need to strengthen eastern flank of NATO. So now, now we are in the process of, on one side, uh, improving nationally in all three Baltic states. For example, in Lithuania, we increased our defense uh, 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 spendings up to 2.52% of GDP. Uh, uh, our government allocated additional budget to improve existing military infrastructure, new mm. polygons, new barracks. And in addition to that, we made a decision to scale up our national uh, military formations from the level of brigades to national divisions. So on one side, we are uh, working hard uh, or uh, 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 fulfilling uh, uh, our uh, implementing uh, um, our national decisions, but right. on our side, on our side, we are in, uh, I believe, good, comprehensive dialogue with our uh, partners, all three Baltic states, and uh, NATO headquarters and other allies uh, in implementing actually Madrid uh, declaration decisions, scaling up first of all. Uh, battalion level uh, uh, formations to uh, uh, combat ready brigades. Right. But in addition to that, we need to enhance air and uh, missiles defense to be more effective in uh, all three Baltic states. You, you mentioned the two and a half percent of GDP that you spend on defense spending. At the summit, your country is going to host. Jens Stoltenberg, the Secretary General, has said. We want 2% to be a floor. What do you say to countries like Canada that are not at 2% and don't have a clear, transparent plan to get to 2%? Uh, let me answer in this way. That, is, uh, mm, uh, that decision was made uh, uh, in 2014 in at the uh, NATO yep. Wales Summit. All allies agreed on uh, uh, 2%. So, of course, uh, it's e e e each country's sovereign decision how to reach this uh, level. So we expect at Vilnius NATO Summit that more and more allies will be ready to declare that actually they are going uh, mm, to reach this level of 2%. But what is most important, you already mentioned, uh, speaking about uh, possible renewal of defense investment pledge is uh, very important to agree that 2% is a uh, floor. Is a floor. Is a floor. But if, if there are a bunch of countries in NATO, Canada being one of them, and, and a G7 country, so a wealthy country, that, that should be able to get there. And there's, been, there's even been reporting that Prime Minister Trudeau has told NATO allies that Canada will never get there. I mean, with what you're spending and your proximity to the war, is it acceptable for NATO partners not like Canada not to get to 2%? Uh, as I mentioned, decisions uh, were made uh, uh, eight, uh, almost nine, nine years, ago. years ago. So we are in process and implementing. So uh, let's hope that everybody will go this right direction. Okay. Vice Minister, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much.